Greetings folks, Chris here, and welcome to Two Improper's Citizen Carry channel. And folks, what we are going to talk about very briefly is velocity. And no, we are not going to get very ballistically scientific about this. We're not going to get that deeply into this. We are just going to talk about what is apparent from velocity. What would be apparent to the lay person on velocity. And what we've got right here is a spinner target. And we're going to use this as our medium. This is a good demonstration of velocity. And I'll tell you why as we go along here. This is a spinner target and it's rated for handgun loads up to 44 Magnum. So it can take a lot of velocity. It can take a lot of projectile weight. And this very spinner target here has taken nine millimeter loads quite easily. 22 long rifle loads. And you can see the 22 long rifle hits. You see these little dots right here, like that one right there, these two right here. Those are 22 long rifle hits. It has taken 380 ACP quite easily. 45 ACP, it shrugged it off. This is a 230 grain projectile, and we'll talk about projectile weights as we go along here, but 45 ACP, this is very smooth. There's no damage. It has been hit by all of these rounds up to and including 357 Magnum. So why is there no damage? Is this impervious to damage? Well, I don't know, this could take a 230 grain projectile weight. You would think that it would have incurred some damage. This is a half inch of steel. You would think that it would have taken some damage, right? Well, no, not from the handgun loads. This is rated for handgun use. But the difference between 230 grain projectile weight and what, say, 55 grain projectile weight, if 230 grains coming at 900 feet per second can't damage that, then would 55 grains be able to damage it? Here we've got a 556 five, load right here. Would that be able to damage it? You would think not, right? Because it's only 55 grains, but you would be thinking wrong. Now on the reverse side of the spinner target, a friend of ours forgot that this is a handgun load target and he hit it with the 556. Five, Actually, I think he hit it with a 223, which is even less powerful than the 556. Five, this 55 grain projectile made this massive crater in this spinner target. And these are all sharp shards of metal right here. I cut myself on this already. So 55 grains did this. 230 couldn't, but 55 grains could. Why? Velocity. Velocity counts for a lot. It accounts for a lot of penetration. It accounts for a lot of ballistic effectiveness. 55 grains. You would think it couldn't do it, but it did. And that is, of course, again, because velocity. This is well over 2,000 feet per second. And in some cases, getting right up there close to 3,000 feet per second versus about 850 feet per second to 930 feet per second in velocity. And even though this has more mass at 230 grain, it was not going to do the damage because of velocity compared to this at well over 2,000. So. That is the difference. Case in point two, where did this come from? Well, that certainly had to have happened by a bigger projectile, right? No, 17 HMR. This is a 17 grain projectile. A 17 grain projectile is much smaller than nine millimeters, 115 grain. It's even much smaller than 380s, 90 grain. This is just a 17 grain projectile that made these pits in this handgun target. And you would think that being a rimfire cartridge and only 17 grains that this thing would just shrug it off and it did not. You see that? Because we're talking about velocity again, well over 2000 feet per second coming from a 17 HMR rifle. And depending on the load and depending on the barrel length and everything like that, it could be faster or slower. There's always those variables. But 17 HMR, a 17 grain projectile, was able to accomplish damage to something that a 44 Magnum could not damage. That is incredible. And that, folks, is velocity. Anyway, folks, I hope that you enjoyed this little easygoing presentation, but that is the apparent effects of velocity versus mass. Well, folks, that's it. I'm Chris, or too improper, and thanks for watching. My email address will be scrolling across the bottom of the screen as we speak right now. That's too improper at gmail.com. 
right? And I will answer you, provided you're going to be polite about whatever it is you have to say, and if I have the time. Thanks for watching, folks. God bless the United States of America.